Monaco is the world's second smallest country. So tiny, you could walk across it in under an hour. Yet it's home to more billionaires per square mile than anywhere else on Earth. When this ultra-wealthy microstate ran out of space, it launched a $2 billion mega-project to push back the Mediterranean Sea itself, the Mara Terra. This expansion isn't just creating new luxury real estate, it's redefining what's possible when unlimited wealth meets engineering innovation. Monaco's problem is simple, it's running out of room. At just 0.78 square miles, this microstate is smaller than New York's Central Park, yet it packs in 39,000 residents, making it the most densely populated country on Earth. But density isn't the real story here. It's who lives in Monaco that matters. One in three residents is a millionaire. The average price for a home? $5.2 million. Want a decent-sized apartment with a sea view? That'll be $30 million. The math is brutal. When you're wedged between mountains and sea, with every inch of land already developed, how do you keep growing? How do you house the yacht-owning elite who fuel your economy? For Prince Albert II, the answer was clear. If you can't expand outward or upward, expand into the ocean itself. This isn't just about luxury apartments. Monaco's economy depends on attracting and keeping the ultra-wealthy. Without room to grow, the principality risks losing its competitive edge to other tax havens around the world. This isn't Monaco's first attempt at naval conquest. Since the 1950s, the principality has reclaimed nearly 20% of its territory from the Mediterranean, including the glamorous Lavotto Beach District and the land that hosts its famous Formula One Grand Prix. The Fontvieille District, completed in 1981, added 0.08 square miles, a massive 10% increase to Monaco's territory. Built under Prince Rainier III, known as the Builder Prince, this project transformed a mostly barren rock outcropping into prime real estate that now houses 3,000 residents. But the new Mara Terra project is different. Previous reclamations were essentially just fill and build operations, dump rocks and concrete into the sea, flatten it out and start construction. That approach doesn't work anymore, not when Monaco's ruler positions himself as an environmental champion. Not when the Mediterranean ecosystem is already under immense pressure from climate change, overfishing and pollution. The $2 billion price tag isn't just buying land, it's buying a new approach to expansion that attempts to balance luxury with sustainability. The Mara Terra expansion covers 15 acres, that's about 15 football fields, extending Monaco's coastline by nearly 500 feet into the Mediterranean. But the real engineering magic happens underwater. Unlike traditional land reclamation that simply pours concrete and rocks onto the seabed, Mara Terra sits on a foundation of 18 massive concrete caissons. Each one is seven stories tall and weighs 10,000 tons. Manufactured on land, then towed out to sea and sunk into precisely mapped positions. The logistics alone are staggering. Each caisson required 3,800 cubic meters of concrete, enough to fill an Olympic swimming pool. A specialized factory was built just to produce these massive structures, which were then transported by barge to their final locations. These hollow concrete boxes weren't just dropped onto the seabed. Engineers first had to remove 500,000 cubic meters of unstable soft soil and replace it with a more stable foundation. Every step had to account for potential earthquakes as Monaco sits in a seismically active region. The design also needed to withstand the Mediterranean's increasingly violent storms, a direct consequence of climate change. Computer models simulated 100-year storm events, ensuring the structures could withstand waves up to 8 meters high. The caissons themselves were designed with holes and textured surfaces to encourage marine life to colonize them. Within months, these artificial structures began transforming into artificial reefs, an attempt to mitigate the environmental impact of the project. Once the caissons were in place, the space between them and the original shoreline was filled with 1.5 million tons of sand imported from quarries in northern Italy. This wasn't just any sand. It was meticulously selected to match the composition and color of Monaco's existing beaches. Is it enough? We'll explore that question later. But first, let's look at what Monaco is actually building on this reclaimed land. When you're already the world's wealthiest nation per capita, your new neighborhood can't just be nice. It has to be extraordinary. Mara Terra will house approximately 1,000 ultra-wealthy residents in 120 luxury apartments. The centerpiece is a striking sailboat-shaped skyscraper designed by renowned architect Renzo Piano, a deliberate nod to Monaco's maritime heritage. 
Piano's design isn't just aesthetically pleasing, it's functional. The building's curved shape minimizes wind resistance, crucial for a structure built on artificial land. Its sail-like facade incorporates photovoltaic panels that generate up to 40% of the building's energy needs. Surrounding this centerpiece are six smaller residential buildings, each designed to maximize natural light and minimize energy consumption. Every apartment has a sea view, a must-have feature when prices start at $100,000 per square meter. But the real selling point isn't just the architecture, it's the green credentials. The district is designed to be carbon neutral with solar panels, seawater heat pumps, and rainwater recovery systems. Buildings feature living walls and rooftop gardens. There's even a small artificial hill, a rarity in space-starved Monaco, creating a public park that overlooks the Mediterranean. The project includes a sophisticated waste management system that sorts and processes trash underground, eliminating the need for garbage trucks. Smart sensors monitor air quality, water usage, and energy consumption in real time, adjusting systems for maximum efficiency. Cars? They're banished underground. The entire district is pedestrian only, with vehicles accessing apartments and businesses through a network of subterranean tunnels. Electric shuttles provide transportation within the district, connecting to Monaco's existing public transit system. For Prince Albert II, this eco-friendly approach isn't just marketing, it's personal. As an oceanographer and environmental advocate, he's positioned Monaco as a leader in marine conservation. Mara Terra is his attempt to prove that development and environmental stewardship can coexist. But can a project that fundamentally alters the coastline ever truly be sustainable? From the beginning, Mara Terra faced fierce opposition from environmental groups. Their concerns were straightforward. Any artificial extension into the sea would disrupt marine ecosystems. The project site overlapped with a protected Posidonia seagrass meadow. Underwater plants crucial for marine biodiversity and carbon sequestration. These lungs of the Mediterranean take centuries to grow and are already threatened throughout the region. One square meter of Posidonia can produce 14 liters of oxygen daily and support up to 300 different species. Destroying these meadows doesn't just harm local marine life, it contributes to climate change by eliminating a natural carbon sink. Monaco's solution? Carefully transplant the seagrass to a new protected area before construction began. Teams of divers painstakingly moved over 500 square meters of seagrass to a nearby marine reserve. The principality also funded the creation of artificial reefs and marine protected areas to offset the project's impact. More than 600 concrete structures were placed on the seabed to create new habitats for displaced marine life. Additionally, Monaco committed $35 million to marine conservation projects throughout the Mediterranean. This included funding research expeditions, supporting marine protected areas in neighboring countries, and launching educational programs about ocean conservation. Critics argue these measures are mere window dressing, that you can't truly compensate for permanently altering the coastline. The transplanted seagrass has only a 50% chance of survival, according to independent marine biologists. And artificial reefs, while beneficial, can't replace the complex ecosystems that evolved naturally over thousands of years. But Monaco's defenders point to the project's strict environmental monitoring system, which tracks water quality, marine biodiversity, and ecosystem health in real time. Any significant negative impacts trigger immediate mitigation measures. The reality lies somewhere in between. Mara Terra represents a significant improvement over Monaco's previous land reclamation projects, but it still fundamentally changes the natural coastline. The question isn't whether it has an environmental impact, it's whether that impact is justified by the principality's desperate need for space. At $2 billion for 15 acres, Mara Terra costs roughly $133 million per acre, making it some of the most expensive real estate ever created. The numbers are staggering. The case on foundation alone cost $450 million. Environmental mitigation added another $200 million. The specialized construction techniques required to build on reclaimed land added a 40% premium to building costs compared to construction on natural land. But Monaco's government expects to recoup this investment many times over. The apartments alone are projected to sell for over $100,000 per square foot more than double the average price in Monaco's existing luxury market. The math works out to approximately $3.5 billion in residential sales alone. Add in commercial space, 
parking garages, and marina berths, and the total revenue could exceed $5 billion, a 150% return on investment. For buyers, these prices make sense. Monaco offers a powerful combination of security, privacy, and most importantly, tax benefits. With no income tax, no capital gains tax, and no property tax, the principality is a haven for the ultra-wealthy. A billionaire who purchases a $50 million apartment in Mara Terra might save that much in taxes within just a few years of residency, making the property essentially free in the long run. The economic ripple effects extend beyond real estate. The project created over 2,000 construction jobs and will eventually support hundreds of permanent positions in retail, hospitality, and property management. Mara Terra also includes a small technology incubator, part of Monaco's effort to diversify its economy beyond banking and tourism. The principality hopes to attract fintech and green tech startups, offering tax incentives and state-of-the-art facilities. For Monaco, the math is simple. Without expansion, growth stalls. And in the high-stakes world of tax havens, standing still means falling behind competitors like Singapore, Dubai, and the Cayman Islands. But land reclamation has its limits. Even with its new addition, Monaco remains tiny. The principality has already built upward, with skyscrapers dominating its skyline. It's built downward, with underground parking garages and shopping centers. Now, it's building outward into the sea. What happens when these options are exhausted? That's where Monaco's next frontier comes in. Monaco is already planning its next expansion, but this time, the vision is far more radical. Floating neighborhoods that don't just extend the coastline, but create entirely new real estate above the waves. Early concepts show modular floating platforms that can be expanded or reconfigured as needed. A solution that could potentially cause less environmental disruption than traditional land reclamation. These floating structures would be anchored to the seabed, but rise and fall with the tides. Preliminary designs include underwater observation areas, allowing residents to live both above and below the water's surface. Is this the future of urban development in coastal cities facing rising seas and limited space? Or is it another example of how the ultra-wealthy live by different rules than the rest of us? Let us know what you think in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and watch our next one shown on screen. Thank you for watching.